Yes, people, Fenton from self Builds by Fenton here. And today, what we're going to be talking about are the 16 key milestones you're going to need to deliver a self build project. And what we're doing is building two times three bedroom properties in the middle of East London. <laughs> So I've put this list in order of what I think is the best sequence, but just bear in mind, obviously it may vary from project to project. So number one on my list is the tax position. Consult on a tax expert, depending on what self build you're actually carrying out in this uh, in the first place. So working out the reasons why you're carrying out your self build, as I've mentioned in previous videos, will massively help you in those tax conversations and know where you're going from a destination perspective. So if after this project, you're planning to do X, Y, Z property, that's going to change your tax position than if, for example, you're just doing this to build a family home and then move in afterwards. So definitely consult tax professional irrespective of what your end goals are. And number two is the VAT position. So understanding the VAT implications on your materials and services during the construction via your accountant. So just for your understanding and awareness, self-builders who meet specific eligibility criteria may be able to claim a refund um, on the VAT paid for materials and services used in the construction. For memory though, I don't think it, it does include professional services like be an architect or a structural engineer. It's more on the trade. So anyone who's physically carrying out work and needs to order materials as a result. Number three, pre-planning conditions. An example in our case of the planning conditions that we had on our planning application approval are as follows things like Removal of redundant crossover. So we have a drop curb currently outside and they want you to get rid of it based on the new two properties being built. Cycle parking. So on the agreed and approved planning drawing, we need to install some cycle parking um, at the front of the prop both properties. Hard and soft landscaping is another example. Um, contact and set up property licensing if you're planning to rent the properties out. So these are examples of planning conditions. You will know what yours are based on your approved planning application. Number four, obtaining drawdown funding approval. So pretty straightforward, securing the financing for your project. Again, it's varied depending on exactly what you're doing. Multiple ways to fund the projects. Number five, insurance coverage. This one's critical and a lot of people miss it. So I've just given you, I'll give, quickly give you a brief overview of the various insurances you'll need. So side insurance, obtaining your side insurance to cover potential risks like theft, vandalism, and accidental damage during the construction phase, public liability insurance before the construction begins, acquire public liability insurance to protect against claims from third parties for injury or property damage that might occur on or around the construction site. Building insurance after construction completion, switching the site insurance to comprehensive building insurance to cover the completed structure against risks such as fire, flood and theft. Banks are going to need this when, if you decide to refinance or sell the property. Professional indemnity insurance throughout the design phase. If you engage architects, engineers, or other professionals for the design phase, make sure that they carry professional indemnity insurance to protect against claims arising from errors or omissions in their work. And then employers liability insurance. Before hiring any contractors or subcontractors, Ensure you have employer's liability insurance to cover claims from employees or laborers who may get injured during the construction process. Number six is warranty. Things like structural warranty. Before the construction begins, arrange a structural warranty to cover defects in the design, materials, and workmanship that may arise after completion. This warranty typically lasts for 10 years and it is essential for obtaining mortgages and selling the property. Warranty registration. After construction's completed, register the structural warranty with the relevant provider to activate its coverage fully. Number seven, party wall agreement forward slash neighbor condition survey. So as we all know, party wall agreements are to just notify your neighbors the fact that you're going to be carrying out significant work um, and to make them aware of times you're going to be working, etc., etc. And the neighbor condition survey is important but again not a lot of people do it so you get a survey for both neighboring properties to assess the current situation in relation to the boundary on their side so that if there is a potential claim 
from the neighbor saying that your will damaged their property you're covered if you don't do it then there's no way to confirm or deny whether it was your bill that was responsible for causing damage to their property and you could just end up tied up in courts etc etc and being sued number eight building control approval and within building control approval obviously it's a case of getting the designs done by your architect structural engineer maybe drainage engineer again depends on what project you're working on will determine what type of designs and drawings you're going to need to submit to building control oh and one thing i missed off was getting building control compliant designs let's just say because fundamentally that's easier when you if you do decide to subcontract the work out whoever it, whether it's an electrician whether it's a plumber they will have compliant designs to work from so that you're not you don't need to worry about the fact that it meets building control regulations because the design meets building control regulations number nine is commencement of construction number 10 are the key construction phases also milestones within milestones let's just say those are foundation and groundwork excavation footings and foundation work superstructure construction of walls floors and roof first fix installation of plumbing and electrical systems before interior finishes second fix adding internal finishes such as plastering floor and decorations Final fix, installing fixtures, fittings, and finishing touches. A lot of alliteration there. Brings me back to GCSEs. External works, landscaping, driveways, and exterior finishing. Number 11, quality control and inspections. So conducting regular quality checks to ensure construction meets required standards, etc. And, and arrange inspections by the building control or whatever relevant authorities you have in your project, maybe or you know, building control overseer is the local council. Number 12, final inspections and certifications. Obtaining necessary certifications such as energy performance certificates, arranging final inspections and obtaining sign-off from building control and relevant authorities. I'll dig, a dip, I'll dig a bit deeper into this one. So in our case, I'll call out what our building control have asked for from a certification perspective. Water efficiency calculations, automatic fire alarm system installation and commissioning certificate to grade A LD2 standard, gas safe certificate required for boiler installation, HETAS certificate for solid fuel appliance, wood burner, and flu installation if required. I don't think this is required for us. Heating and hot water system installation and commissioning certificates, Part P electrical certificate. Flat roof water tightness test certificate, air pressure test certificate, as bill SAP report and EPC. So the energy performance certificate provides information about the energy efficiency of the completed building and recommendations for improving its energy performance. It's a legal requirement when selling, renting, or constructing a property. I think that's that thing you see on the side of properties when they're being sold on like right move or other sites like that. Um, the SAP report assesses the ed energy performance of the completed building based on its actual construction and specifications. It's essential to meet the building regulations and demonstrate compliance with energy efficient requirements. Part Q certificates. Part Q certificates are related to building security and are specifically required for new dwellings in England under Part Q or building regulations. And then finally, agree inspections and obtain sign-off from building control and relevant authorities. Number 13, completion and handover. Ensure all construction works are finished. Conduct a thorough snagging process to identify any defects. Handover if necessary. Obviously, there's not going to be a handover. Handover to ourselves. Number 14, post-completion activities. Address any outstanding issues or defects during the defects liability period. Provide any necessary documentation to the owner, client, including warranties and manuals. Number 15, project closeout. Complete all financial transactions related to the project. Archive project documentation for future records. Number 16 is the exit strategy. So deciding, you know, what exit you're going to take, whether it's going to be a, a rental property, whether it's going to be selling the property off, obviously, this is something you need to decide at the beginning of the project because it may have an impact on tax, etc. So that's your list, people. 
I hope that's very helpful and valuable. I hope you've been taking some notes. Um, because as I say, I'm here doing all the dirty work, getting all this information together for you. I'll just read out a quick disclaimer. Um, the order of some of these activities may vary depending on the specific requirements and circumstances of each self-build project. It's essential to plan and coordinate these activities carefully to ensure a successful and smooth self-build process. Additionally, seeking professional advice and guidance can be beneficial throughout the various stages of this project. So if you think I've missed anything on this list from a critical milestone perspective, let me know in the comments below. If you found this video valuable, definitely hit like and subscribe. Support the channel people, as I keep saying on every single video. And I look forward to seeing you all on the next episode of Self Builds by Fenton. Until then, peace.